Welcome back to my YouTube channel everybody. I have an off topic video for you today, but it was actually inspired by you guys. I can't remember which video it was, it wasn't that long ago. I think it was my bathroom video and I said the phrase, I was putting it on the long finger. Or maybe it was the declutter video. But anyway, I said the phrase, sure I was putting it on the long finger. And I had people come to go, you put what on your finger? <laughs> and I was like, I had to Google it then. Someone was like, I Googled what that meant. And so did I. <laughs> and a post came up with like Irish sayings. And a few times on my videos, um, I think it's more like American and Australian viewers make comments saying, what does that mean? Um, and I noticed that like us Irish people slip phrases in unknowingly to ourselves and it confuses you people. <laughs> I don't mean you people, that sounds quite rude, but it confuses people. I thought it would be funny to go through a couple, I don't know how many, I have like a list here and I'm going off the article that I found the words. So I'll keep an eye on the timer, I'll try and keep this less than 20 minutes, but I'll give you as much value as I can with the Irish words and sayings. I'm gonna start off with the one that caused this video, which is on the long finger. It actually has a proper um, explanation for it. So, Aaron var father, as in to postpone something. It comes from the Irish proverb, <laughs> and my Irish isn't great now. Look at this. Where God was Aaron var father, I guess they on var father, Rory. Well, basically means. If you put everything on the long finger, then the long finger will be too short in no time. Basically, you're just delaying something. So on, uh, I'll put it on the long finger. You will do it, you don't know when. You don't even know if you'll do it, but it's on the long finger. <laughs> Another thing I want to just highlight is sometimes Irish meanings. So for example, Sophia, lovely girl from Chile, stayed with me, I think two years ago. And she came to Ireland to learn English. And I was like, you came to Ireland to learn English. So, <laughs> and we brought her out to the pub with my friends. And we had to kind of explain that sometimes a word may have multiple meanings and it all comes down to the context in which it's said and the way it's said. And yeah, don't come to Ireland to learn English because you'll go home speaking a different, a different language. Also, my accent is the east of Ireland. And I don't know if it's like a tribal ancestor thing but you could come to Ireland and you'll hear tens of different accents. You'll have a Dublin accent, then you'll have Northern Ireland accent, you could have a Cork accent, you could have a Galway accent. The west of Ireland will sound different to the east. Um, down south Kerry, very strong accents, I can't even understand them, beautiful accent. So for context I have a Dublin accent and there are phrases and sayings that Dublin people will have that would be different in the country to confuse you even more. Okay, gob. I'm gonna, let's get into it. Gob. So, a casual Irish word for mouth. The toast, gob fluck, is the Irish word. For example, also used for beak. Basically, how would you say this? She's some gob on her would mean she likes to talk. So she's some gob on her, that one. You could be saying a messing, you could be saying a serious, you wouldn't know. Wouldn't be too offensive, I don't think, but say the gob on her means she's talking loud maybe. Um, she's some gob on her, he's some gob on him. Generally he's being loud, I think. So gob is mouth. So how I would say that in context would be some gob on your one, what? Oh your one, <laughs> okay. So your man and your one. Um, your one, I'd say your one, um, but maybe they might say it differently outside of one. So your man could be anybody. There actually was an explanation for it, but I'll give you the explanation. Um, your man, you're just describing a person, but you can't think of their name. Very common, your man would say, ah, oh, you know your man down the road, and you wouldn't really know who she could be on about, but um, you kind of have to read between the lines. So your man or your one is that lady or that man. So you could be in the pub. Jesus, your man over there is a cracker, isn't he? Um, that man is a good looking man over there. Um, or your one has a lovely dress. Now your one, I would kind of say your one. I pronounce it O-N-E. Um, 
your one has lovely shoes, doesn't she? Or your one is a lovely girl. So your man and your one, quite common that you'll hear. Um, and also another thing to confuse is your boyfriend, or there's your girlfriend, there's your boyfriend. How I'm saying that, I mean the opposite. So you could be out with the girls and you could say, oh, there's your boyfriend. And everybody would know that that is not your boyfriend. That man doesn't even know who you are, but you fancy him. Um, and you'd be saying a kind of slagging. Um, or there's your friend. That's not that person's friend. They probably hate them and despise them, but you say, ah, there's your friend. And you'd say it winding up. Um, quite common in my group. Um, I say, ah, which boy, there's your boyfriend. I'd be like, which one? Um, but they know that that's not my boyfriend, that that man doesn't know I exist, but I have a little fancy for him. Yeah, so your man and your one, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, brings me on to another word, your ma. Um, Older kind of word, I think. I think there was an actual explanation in this um, article for the where it came from. Oh, they have a reason here for your man and your one. One of the reasons referring to someone as your man or your one is so interesting is that it has contradictory meanings. The first could be a reference to someone whose name or identity is uncertain or momentarily forgotten. You know who I'm talking about, your man down the road, yeah? The second coded reference that intentionally admits the identity. We all know who your man We'll think about that yeah so you'd be like saying maybe you're referring to your boss or oh, we know what you're wanting to think of that um, but you're not saying the name but everyone knows it's like an intuitive communication uh, I love this one I use this and it drives my ma mad so come here to me <laughs> come here to me generally when you say come here to me means come here to me and I tell you so uh, maybe they could be standing right beside you and nine times out of ten, yeah, come here to me and I tell you, is the opening of a juicy conversation. Come here to me and I tell you, for me, is the opening of a juicy conversation. Hames, me awfully used to use this all the time. You're making a hames of that. To make a hames of something has ha, something has something in common with yolk. Um, again, it's a term related to fastening collars to animals. Hames. The hames are curved pieces of wood or iron attached to the collar of a draft horse on which you can then attach it. Put it in the wrong way and you've made a hames of it. Oh, that's the origin of that basically. Right, you made a hames of it means like you got it wrong, but that's the origin for you're putting something on something wrong. Anyway. Ah, uh, smithereens. Uh, from the Irish, smidder, smidderine, it's an Irish word. If something's in smithereens, oh, it's broken, gone. In smithereens, can't be fixed. Can't be fixed. Generally, like, if a cup fell, smashed in smithereens. Oh, she's in smithereens. Yeah, right, hung over. Oh, a sleeveen. I didn't know that this was an Irish word. I think a sleeveen is like, well, you don't like a sleeveen. A, sli a little snake. Um, a sly person. The term is often used in politics or business to refer to someone who use, use a smooth talk to get their own way or borderline the various means for personal benefit comes from the Irish word sleeveen with fathers which means a trickster particularly a silver tongued one so shady shady boys sleeveen ah up to 90 love this phrase um your ma's up to 90. Your ma's down there causing murder in the shop. She's up to 90. She could be stressed out. She's like, I'm up to 90. I'd still use that phrase. You're very stressed out. You're very busy. You're up to 90. Now, the origin of it could mean 90 miles per hour, similarly to going 90 or reaching boiling point or with a harsh rate of more than 90 beats per minute. For some reason, up to 90 tends to be used more by Irish women than men. Yeah, I wouldn't really say he's up to 90. I say she, and it's generally her mother. <laughs> She's up to 90. I'm gonna put this one in, this could be kind of mine. Um, my dad would have used it, had, he would have had a variation. So get up out of that, get up out of that. Um, which means get up out of that. <laughs> That's what I'm saying when I say get up out of that, even though I say get up out of that. Um, me, Eiffel would have said, what about that garden? If someone, they basically stop you on messing. And um, what about that? Is, yeah, stop messing, kind of. <laughs> you, you can't have to intuitively see what it means, but I'd be like, what about that? 
yeah, stop carrying on, stop your messing. Or are you for real? If one of the girls were like, oh, so and so's causing murder around the shops, bow that, don't believe you. Um, leave me on it, causing murder. <laughs> causing murder isn't. Okay, this could be a dumb thing, she's causing murder, I was causing murder, I would say this phrase. Um, generally, you're kicking off, but like if you rang the guards and said, so and so over there is causing murder, they wouldn't send like the murder squad, if that makes sense. They'd be like, what are you doing, like causing murder? Generally, someone's kicking off, someone's having a bit aggro, but there's probably different scales of causing murder. Generally, it's harmless, <laughs> which means the opposite. Now, if you rang the guards and said there is a murder, they'd obviously take that. That's a murder. It's how you say it. So, for example, my mum was causing murder with me outfit last night. She could have been having a fight with him. Could have been tame. Could have been not giving him hassle. Don't know. My outfit was causing murder in the pub, and um, he might have just been winding someone up, or he could have actually had someone in a headlock. You wouldn't know. Um, generally, if you were like, I was causing murder, um, the girls would be like, what are you doing? Um, but it wouldn't be too much of a cause for concern. Um, I was causing murder, I think, yeah, you'd have to be clear now if you're reporting murder in Ireland. <laughs> Don't say causing murder, you'd have to say there's been a murder. Yeah, causing murder could be a Dublin thing. Also, if you want to watch a really funny um movie watch the snapper so the snapper would be my side of ireland the east it's a dublin and um, the lads in it are from dublin i think are they north county dublin or are they south I'm not sure but watch the snapper i don't know if you can get it on netflix but if you want to have like more irish mannerisms i love your man in it when he goes jesus um also saying jesus that might really offend um people and I totally understand that but that's grand here um so for me to say oh Jesus um <laughs> like my mom can't say I don't take the God's name in vain but Jesus is not not offensive but I totally understand if that would offend people um was it the Lord's name in vain right let's fire through some more of these I link this post that I'm reading off um she been, she been, oh yeah, actually, because of the lockdown, we're still in lockdown here, there has been raids on she beans. Basically, she been to me would be a little pub out someone's back garden, tiny little pub, few stools, um, the makings of a pub. Um, but here's the actual thing from the Irish she been, S I for the B, I for the N. This is the first of many words in the list related to general divilment <laughs> in Rula Bula. Perhaps nowhere was the concept of the she being more embraced than in South African townships, where they are an important part of the social and cultural landscape. It's not giving me a history other than the word. It's it's a hidden pub, a little pub, a she being, down to she being, yeah. A uh, crack, crack journeyed from the Middle East, C-R-A-K, via Shakespeare to the 18th century Scotland, and was then adopted into Hiberno-English in the mid 20th century, given its Gaelic spelling, a, pro a disposition, a state of being, a sin to not be any, the crack. Like many quintessentially Irish things from St. Patrick to Chippers isn't all, isn't Irish at all, but it's very much wrong. So crack actually isn't Irish. Um, as she's go crack, He's good crack. There's good crack down in the pub. Um, wouldn't use it as much, but then you would notice a slip in. So good crack is if if that's a really really good compliment. If someone says, "Oh my God, she's she's good crack," highest compliment you can give us. Uh, your ma or your ma, <laughs> M O T or M O T H, from the Irish ma M A I T H, meaning good, but also well and like the term for someone's girlfriend. The word. Or your bird, <laughs> as it were. So your ma is your girlfriend. Um, or any moths? Any moths down the pub? Any ladies? <laughs> a lock-in. Okay, I'm going to tell you what a lock-in is in Ireland. Because if you do visit Ireland and you get a lock-in, you're very privileged. And you don't, you don't rat on a lock-in. A lock-in is when you're in the pub and the pub is supposed to close at, let's say, 1am. Okay? And... The pub closes the doors and you get to stay inside and they continue serving drink and a blind eye is turned and 
you don't go around gloating that. You might say, oh, I got a lock-in in the pub last night. Maybe you know the barman. Maybe you know the owner. Maybe you were just good crack. And they let you stay. And you could continue having a few shandies. And, but yeah, the rule is, don't be ratting on a lock-in. If you get a lock-in, it's a privilege. Um, certain places have lock-ins, and I think it's an unspoken rule. Maybe, like, the guys is throw a blind eye. The guys would be in on the lock-in. Maybe you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. Um, but they're clamping down, obviously, now on that, because... So the pubs are closed. You can't even get a takeaway point. They stop giving the barrels. But anyway... Around, okay, staying on the alcohol topics. If you come to Ireland and you don't buy around, there will be murder, murder, and I mean killings. Irish people go to the pub and we get around, and around is, there could be me, let's say just me and my three friends, me, Rachel, and Adele. And I'll generally get the first one because I get too drunk and I don't want to be the last one on around, right? So I'll buy the three drinks. Rachel buy the next one, Adele will buy the next one. If for any reason, they skipped me and went again and I didn't buy a round. Let's say I, w I was in a round and I went up to the bar and I bought my own drink. Well, and I didn't buy them one after being in rounds. Murder. Um, don't, not, it's, it's, it's a common <laughs> thing to give out about people not buying the round. So if you're someone like me who gets too tipsy, I'll say to the girls, let me buy the first round. And then by the time the round has gone around, I'll say, lads, I'm out, and I just get, like, I generally get, like, a fake vodka. Or you get 7-Up in a vodka glass, like a fancy glass. Or a gin, but it's not a gin, it's 7-Up. Or water. Um, so, yeah, around, according to the Condé Nast Travellers article, how not to look like a tourist in an Irish pub, if you go out in a group with a bunch of Irish people, watch out for your companions buying rounds. It's common here for people to buy a round for the group, then the next round is on the next person. They left out the social ostracization and lifelong character assassination that can follow for those who don't get around in. Yeah, buy a round, it's good. Around, be sound, buy a round. <laughs> A bog, uh, a bog can be a toilet, so a bog is a bog, so the name for the peaty wetland found across Ireland in the Ir is the Irish for soft, but a bog also has a double meaning of a toilet, so I'm going to the bog. Um, I don't have a reason for that, but I'm going to the bog. A culty, okay. I don't want to do a Dublin and country divide, but I'm going to explain on this. So, a culty, what have they said? The pejorative hypo, hiberno English term that urban sophisticates, i.e., Dubliners, use to describe the, ru the rural cousins. But where does it come from? Many have suggested culanti, as in the back of the house. Down the country, you enter through the back door rather than the front, that's true. Or as servants, you enter the back door to your boss's house. Um, either way, it's only popular to describe people from the country in the 1960s when Dubliners needed somebody. <laughs> okay, I got in trouble for this in work, um, but I meant no harm, right? So, a culture is someone from the country. What is the country, I hear you say? As a Dublin person, they may say, um, anything outside of Dublin is the country, um, which is totally wrong because you've got other cities and big built up areas in Ireland. You've got, I mean, like, look at Cork, Limerick, Galway, big cities. And basically, and I live on the border to two other counties, so I would be County Dublin. I'm not City Dublin, I'm County Dublin. But still, it'd be like, oh, he's from the country. He might only be half an hour down the road, but he's a culture. <laughs> it's not an offence. But then on the opposite, now on the opposite, a Jackine. So a Jackine would be someone from Dublin. So, um, for example, me and Joanne were in Galway last year and we were on the lash and we got chatting to uh, some man. Was it the next day and we were having a cup of tea? And she's from Tipperary, I'm from Dublin. She's like middle and down and uh, he was like, how's the culty and a Jackie and end up being friends, like joking. So a Jackie is a Dublin kind of person. They had a, a where that came from. But the culties, we, I don't say, I don't mean that in a slagging way. I don't mean any malice with it. And I got in trouble for saying, I was at a meeting. No, I wasn't. I was with my boss and I said, um, at the time, I said, 
of the country people. And she was like, you can't say that. And I was like, why? Now, she, I think she was from the country. I was like, I don't mean any harm with that. And I said, she's from the country. And I can understand how it might have sounded a bit um, condescending or rude, but there was no harm meant. So sometimes you might hear people saying, oh, she's from the country. Um, it just means she's not from Dublin. And I don't mean, that sounds really arrogant, but there's no arrogance meant. And I, an Irish person would understand that. Well, I hope they would. A kip, the state you left the place in. Now, that's the word I'd use this place, an awful kip. Like, if you watched that video where I was talking about the painted tiles in the bathroom, in the pub, that was an awful kip awful kip and um, the state you left a place in and another adopted irish slang word from middle low german via middle dutch a kip being a bundle of hides which is probably what was strewn across your bedroom floor if i could even see it under all those clothes ah yeah kip you've wrecked the gaff gaff is a house as well deadly now this is funny um because my friend joanne again would use a different word and when i say deadly um so deadly doesn't mean what it sounds. So you could be like, oh my God, um, let me think. I could say, oh, that's deadly. That's like really good. I love that. Yes. Um, not deadly as in you could die from it. <laughs> but then I think I was in Limerick once and I said deadly and they were like, what do you mean it's deadly? They meant, they thought I meant bad. So again, you'd be very confused, but so, uh, following the trend of using ordinary negative words to describe things positively, wicked, sick, insane, killing it, deadly is a quintessentially contemporary Dublin word um, and with which to signify something's coolness. Yeah, I would say, oh, that's deadly. Now, wicked, Joanne says wicked, and I love when she says wicked. She's like, that's wicked bad, or that's wicked good. I know what she means. I can't explain it, but I know what she means. Again, comes with the context, with the energy and how it's said and the mannerisms. Irish people, I think, talk a lot with hands, body, emotion. We're storytellers. I think that's the, you just know, do you know? A uh, cute whore, and I'm not saying W-H-O-A-R. Cute whore is H-O-O or whore, a cute whore. Um, pretty self-explanatory if you're Irish from cute is in sly. And whore as in whore, oh it does mean that. Particularly aimed at those in business, politics and anywhere else that deals are being cut. So yeah, it's a it's a smart, so you'd be like, um, let's say there's a house for sale over there and your man down the road got in, put in a bin, bid early. So I don't know, he did something and I'd be like, oh he's a cute whore, isn't he? He's a cute whore. After doing that, like he's he's smart, could be sly, he's a cute whore. Um, or look at her, she's a cute whore getting in with a man now. Or I don't know, that could be the context in which it's said. Chance in your arm. I thought this might be something used by everybody. Oh, she was chance in your arm, that one with your man last night. Um, a phrase that was born in 1492 when the butlers of Ormond and the Fitzgeralds of Kildare were involved in a dispute that culminated in the butlers going to St. Patrick's Cathedral in Dublin, where they were followed by the Fitzgeralds. They asked the butlers to come out, so they didn't make peace. The butlers refused leading to Gerald Fitzgerald, what a name, to suggest a hole to be cut in the door to offer his handshake, aka chancing one's arm. Makes absolute sense. 1492, isn't it mad how it's still said today? Also, me and myself and Karen did a tour of Malahide Castle last year um during the summer the lockdown restrictions were lifted slightly um we went for tea ended up doing a tour in Malahide castle it was so good because there, were, there was only like five of us on the tour because there was no like tourism um and she told us so much of the words we say still stems from like his historical times so like phrases from like 17th century 18th century um, I don't have any examples offhand, but the historian doing the tour was so good. And I was like, oh my God, that's where that comes from. Actually, here's an example of, um, take a seat means, um, when apparently, I don't know what century it was from, but she was saying that it was tradition to take the seat home with you or something as a souvenir. So take a seat, that's where that comes from. Don't quote me exactly to a T, that's my rough interpretation of what she said. But basically the phrase take a seat means, um, it goes back to them kind of medieval times. It was like a weird tradition, so. 
Okay, sound, uh, probably could be a Dublin thing, merging from British slang, British slang, I'm not exactly deviating from its original etymology of being in a state of health, as in safe and sound, to mean decent, yeah. If I said, he's sound, he's a good man, you know, or, I oh, know she's sound. So maybe someone might be slagging someone or saying, oh, I don't like your one, da da da. And I'd be like, oh no, she's sound, leave her alone. She's sound. She's a good, she's a good girl. Grant, okay. <laughs> this is, my dad used to slag me for using the word grant. Um, grant can mean anything. <laughs> and grant, you might not be grant, but you've said you're grant. Okay, the ultimate Irish response and affirmation that in any other context means something far grander. Meaning fine or just okay. Grand can also mean substantial and pleasant. However, such as, oh, grand stretch in the evening. Love that phrase. Noting the brightness of an evening. So actually you can notice now with the clocks changing. Um, no, they haven't. Clocks have not changed. I got confused the clocks changed in March, but there is like an extra kind of almost hour in the evening. So you would hear people say there's a grand stretch in the evening. So. The day is longer. Grand stretch in the evening, the day is a bit longer than it was yesterday. Nixer, um, for example, my interpretation of this would be my brother is a mechanic, would you do a nixer for me? Means an out of hours job, um, cash in hand, under the table, nixer. So they have said um, a side job or a short term gig for cash in hand is unclear but surely has to be simply nix from the German nicht. Sorry, N I C H T S or nothing with an air at the end, nixer. They don't know basically where it comes from, but it means a little side job. Uh, generally, tradespeople would do nixers, hairdressers, carpenters would do a nixer, um, cat in hand, um, little side job. Yeah, like I wouldn't do a nixer, let's say, because unless <laughs> generally I would associate it with trade things, but then again, like if someone asked me to do freelance job I wouldn't call it a nixer generally I would keep it to trade so like a nixer is in carpenter mechanic hairdresser nail girl doing a few nixers commenting and um, she's working out of hours you know for an extra few cash for the slim nagging uh, the word for a 200 milliliter bottle of spirits comes from noggin n-o-g-g-i-n a drink measure whose name is derived from the Irish nagin, N-A-I-G-I-F-O-D-N, meaning small wooden pail. Naggins has like a funny chair. My card ran out, which means I have to wind this up. Um, naggins, yeah, any naggins. It basically, it's a little, small bottle of spirit. Um, generally, like a naggin of vodka, naggin of, and then you've got a shoulder, which would be the next one up. So, any naggins. Sometimes you might be sneaking a naggin into a nightclub. Um, 2009, 2008, I'm looking at you when we were all poor but we still wanted to go out. A few naggins. Down, down the pants. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm going to flick through and see if there's any other ones. Banjax, didn't know that this was an Irish saying. Um, a peculiar, peculiar word meaning broken beyond repair that originated around the 1930s but is... What is with the words in this article? Etymology is unknown. The art, the Scottish might be able to shed some light on it, given that to be banjoed means to be hit as hard as possible, and subsequently banjoed almost means wrecked. So banjax is on um, banjax means she's very tired. So oh, it's banjaxed. She's very tired. Can I say this? F e c k. Heck. Um, less offensive than the other word. I can't say the other word because YouTube will strike this video. The F word. Um, you can say F E C K on telly. Um, less offensive than the other bad words and popularised in Britain when Father Ted became a hit. If you're looking for another programme to watch um, to get a bit of Irish humour, watch Father Ted. Um, I'm not sure where you can get it. Britbox, a lot of the guys in the US say you can get things on Britbox. So you might be able to get it there. Channel 4. Um, lash, I assumed this is a common English like word in the dictionary, but another word for the Irish have attached multiple meanings to. Yes, multiple meanings to the one word. To go on the lash means you're going for a few points and going on the lash. I was on the lash last night. Um, lashing down rain, it's raining heavy. 
Um, or he's a good, he's some lash. He's some lash, isn't he? Um, a lash can also mean a ride. A ride means to fornicate with a man or a woman. Um, so I, I want to keep it PG-ish, but I think a ride is a Dublin word. Like, it, I, it could be used like, in the country. Um, but your man is a ride. A common word in my vocabulary. Um, Especially nowadays, since you don't see many men, we see the postman, or the postman's a ride, means he's a lovely looking fella. Um, or the postman is a lash, lovely looking fella. Or <laughs> I gave the postman a lash. Um, could be and you um, fornicated with the postman. Um, or did you get the ride? Did you have sex? Um, <laughs> did you, were you riding? <laughs> Very rude. Uh, well, not too rude, um, and I think that originates from, I don't know where that originates, but you can use your imagination. I mean, you ride a horse and you ride a bike, so that'd be a dumb thing to get to buy it. And that's not offensive, well, it could be offensive to some, but generally it wouldn't be too offensive. Pure, I wouldn't use that, but I would hear that used more in other parts. That would be our B-E-O-U-R, she's on B-O-R, lovely looking girl. Um, <laughs> oh, A1. So Roddy Doyle, watch the snapper. Uh, Roddy Doyle's the snapper predates the change in the leaving certificate grading system, but high praise is still A1 Sharon. Watch the film and you'll understand what A1 Sharon means. Um, yeah. This is one, and this is why I think I struggle when it comes to writing on my website. I use Grammarly to keep me in check. Sometimes Irish people, this word, right? Are you after having your dinner or only after washing your hair? Uh, the Hiberno English use of after confuses other English speakers, but it represents the Irish conjunction tarish. It makes sense to us at least. So yeah, it makes sense. So I'd say to my mom now, are you after cleaning the fire? I can hear her cleaning the fire. So yeah, are you after cleaning the fire? And I can see how that would confuse someone who maybe English isn't their native language, but that's totally common here. You wouldn't know and look Dennis. Um, I'm after making the dinner. <laughs> I don't know why. We, instead of saying I've made the dinner, we say I'm after making the dinner. Or I'm after making you a cup of tea. <laughs> after. Yeah, I thought that was normal um, until I seen it. Nah. I'm trying to think if I have anything else on my oh list. Oh, the rads, okay. Oh, rads in the hot press before we go, because this video's gonna be too long. The rads, could be a Dublin thing. Radiator, rads. Um, the hot press, okay. So the hot press. When I have done videos around cleaning out my hot press, people are like, that's an airing cupboard. And I'm like, it's a hot press. So I did a little bit of research. Apparently it's just an Irish thing. You don't have hot presses in England. You don't have hot presses. I don't think there's hot presses in Northern Ireland. Hot press. Another thing, press is a cupboard. So a hot press is an airing cupboard. Um, it's where we keep air water tank. Sometimes your boiler. Generally it's that big tank that has a lagging jacket on it. And there's a couple of shelves. Storage, because Irish homes, I see people commenting, um, and they may be from other parts of the world, but Irish homes are generally more smaller. We have doors, they're built for retaining heat. Um, if you look at really old Irish cottages, there would be limited storage, so that's why there would be shelves kind of put in them. Um, newer homes are obviously getting better, but yeah, storage is like a kind of battle. Um, so your hot press is used for linens, towels, um, has the uh, boiler also known for just things go into the hot press then they disappear. Um, and it, to me, it makes sense to call it a hot press because it's warm in there and it's a press hot press um but cupboards so i had someone be like what is a press and i'm like a press is a press <laughs> a press is a cupboard uh generally said for in the kitchen your kitchen presses i painted me kitchen presses and um, they don't understand what i meant or it i generally mean i painted the kitchen cabinets cabinets if you say cabinets then you would push um, it's in the press means it's in the cupboard. Don't know which one. Go find it. <laughs> the press is cupboard. Another one is last. I'm going to finish on this one. 
going to get the messages. Um, I don't know where this originates from, but could be a Dublin thing. My mum would use this phrase. I have started using this phrase messing, but now I say it. Uh, so I'm going to get me messages. Could mean, generally it's you're going to the shops. But, I mean, it could be Anne. You could be going to the post office. You're basically going to do your bits um, or run errands is what you guys in the US say run errands basically I'm going to get messages um, used by maybe the older generation um, I actually have started using it because I was slagging my mom and um, now your messages could be out and basically mind your own business uh, it could be a way of saying none of your business as well so if your mom says I'm going to get some messages oh where are you going like what shops I'm going to get me messages means shut up and don't be annoying me and don't mind your own business. Like your ma cook, your ma cook come home absolutely steaming from being in the pub two o'clock in the afternoon and you could turn around and say where are you and she's like I was getting the messages. You can't argue with that, she was getting the messages. Generally gone to shops and um, if you're going to get the messages you're doing your errands so it could be yeah shops um like post office, yeah, having a cup of tea. <laughs> you could do that when you're going on the messages. You could be doing that, really. But, how are you? I was getting me messages. Vague statement. So that is it, I'm gonna end on that because this video is getting too long. I hope it gave you a bit of a giggle. I know it's totally off topic too, my usual kind of stuff, which is why I'm putting it up on Sunday. There'll still be my usual DIY and home kind of stuff on Thursday. I just thought I'd pop up an extra video this week because you guys did inspire me by the long finger quote. Um, so you have inspired this video and I hope it gave you a giggle, maybe an insight into the weird and wild um, vocabulary of the Irish people. <laughs> Obviously there's way more. Um, these are just a few little things I found. There is way more. I'm sure there's books written about it. I could write a book with the things we say. Um, I'm sure there is already one. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Thumbs up if you did. And I'll see you in the next video.